Let's put our hands together and appreciate Jesus. Let's celebrate the King of Kings. You can do better than that for Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can we all stand on our feet wherever we are and just lift up your hands to Jesus. Lift your hands to Jesus. Heavenly Father, this night we are grateful. Lord, we thank you for gathering us in this place. Lord, we thank you for you want that there be a breaking forth. As it has been declared, I pray, that Heavenly Father, let there be a breaking forth from this moment. Let the heavens be open. Let your grace be evident. And let your power be manifest. Let none leave this place the same way that they came in. We give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Put your hands together and appreciate him. I say let's appreciate Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Let's go together to the word of God tonight. In the book of Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah 54. Where our theme comes from for this conference. Allow me to start by saying thank you so much. To the organizing team that has put together this meeting. Can we appreciate the leadership of this great ministry, our president. Let's appreciate our president. Let's appreciate it. Is that the way you appreciate our father? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Let's appreciate all the overseers. Let's appreciate all the overseers and all the entire leadership of FM Zimbabwe for putting your efforts together to have this great gathering. May the Lord richly bless you. God richly bless you. It's my joy, it's such a, my joy, and I'm feeling so honored to stand in this place to bring forth the word of God tonight. I know it's a privilege that has been given to me. There are great preachers here. I've been listening to the word through the day. I've had great ministration happen here. And I know that God wants to accomplish a great thing through this meeting. May this vision be fulfilled. May every desire be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Let's read the word of God together tonight. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 54, verse number 1. Sing, O barren woman, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud you who have not labored with a child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman says the Lord verse 2 it says enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations. And make the desolate cities inhabited. Verse number 4. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced. For you will, you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your windowhood anymore. Verse number five, 
For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the holy one of Israel. For he will, he is called the God of the whole earth. May the Lord richly bless his word. And all of us agree together and shout amen. amen. The theme of this conference is breaking forth. Breaking forth. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you must break forth. Glory be to Jesus. Break forth. And it comes from the book of Isaiah 54. And the Bible says, Sing, O barren woman, you that have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with a child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman. Break forth into singing. And yesterday I said that it begins by calling this woman the prophet of God as he is bringing forth this word. It begins by saying, break forth. He is calling this woman that has not born a child. This woman that has not been in the labor is being challenged to break forth. It is important for us to understand this word, break forth. The word breaking forth has the same perspective with the word to break through. It is it is a purposeful act. It is not something that you are made to do. But it is something that you intentionally decide. That irrespective of my limitations. Irrespective of my current circumstances. I purpose to do something with my status. Glory to Jesus. It is to move forward purposefully. Glory to Jesus. It is to make or to cause progress irrespective of the resistance. Glory to Jesus. I say glory to Jesus. It is to break forth. It is to, is to move forward. It is to move forward. It is to cause progress. It is to intentionally, please give me sound on the monitors. It is to intentionally cause an action irrespective of the resistance. It is a warfare word. The word break forth, it is an assault. It is to cause an assault. It is to break resistance. Glory to Jesus. I say glory to Jesus. It is to go forth beyond an obstacle. There are obstacles, yes. There are resistance. There are circumstances that do not look like they want to cooperate with you. It is to have barriers put around your life. But you decide that irrespective of every circumstance that is out to hinder me, I must go forward. Glory to Jesus. I say glory to Jesus. It is to break forth. Is, an, is a sudden advance. Especially in knowledge or technique. It is to advance. To decide that I must make progress. I must advance. So one of the things that is required in such a status... I said yesterday is that you must be a passionate person. You must stir up your passion. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. If you will break forth, you must raise your passion. Listen. Nobody will cheer you up. Nobody will clap for you. But you must decide that I am tired of my status. And my story must change. Glory to God. 
and you choose to be passionate even if your circumstances are not depicting that you should be passionate. Glory to Jesus. The Bible says, sing all you barren woman. How do you go to a woman that is barren, that has not born a child, and you go to her and tell her that she needs to begin to sing? There must be a knowledge beyond our circumstances. Glory to God. She must know who is this that is addressing her. Glory to Jesus. Listen to me, God's people. That anywhere where there will be progress, any place where there will be a breaking forth, passion is a must. Nothing happens, nothing great happens, or nothing great is accomplished without passion. If you will accomplish anything, when I look at all this gathering, one thing is key. There has been a passionate person beyond all this. You cannot, you cannot come out of the city to come to this place if nothing is driving you. Passion. There is a passion. Tell your neighbor, from this meeting, you must express your passion. You must stir up your passion. Glory to Jesus. I said, nothing great is accomplished without passion. Nothing great is sustained without passion. Let me address my generation tonight and say that young people who are here, if we are going to cause impact, if we will take on the baton from our fathers, we must arise. I say, and arise passionately. Glory to God. I say glory to Jesus. Sing all you barren woman. You that has not had a child. Break forth into singing. There must be a stirring. There must be a knowledge. There must be an insight. There must be an understanding. Beyond. And I pray tonight. I came to pray for someone here. Who has all manner of excuses. And I came to tell you. You must arise above your excuse. Listen. In this life. Anyone that has had impact. They had to rise above their excuses. You will never have impact. If you are a person that lives to give excuses. Glory to Jesus. When God went to Moses and he called Moses to go and deliver the children of Israel. Moses said, I am a stammerer. I don't know how to speak. I am, I, I am not eloquent. God told him that I am the one who created you. I know that. But you must go. And he told him, I've already prepared your brother, Herod, to meet you. And it shall be your mouthpiece. But listen to me. When I look at the entire story of the deliverance of the children of Israel. I see Moses addressing Pharaoh. You must arise above every barrier. Above every limitation. Above every challenge. I came tonight to address whatever circumstance that has kept you down. I say you must break forth. You must arise. You must go beyond your education. Glory to Jesus. You must go beyond the words of men. Some people know your background. But they don't know what God has told you. Let them, they may know who your father was. They may know the village where you were born. They may know the circumstances that surrounded your coming around. But listen to me. Arise above people's words. Arise above the opinion of men. Arise above opposition. And break forth. Somebody say, lift up your right hand and say, I am breaking forth. I cannot hear you. I said, lift up your hand and say, I'm breaking forth. Listen to me. Anything great that is accomplished in this life. Passion is a must. You must be tired of your status. 
you must be tired of people saying whatever they want to say and try, raise yourself, take an action, go against the, the circumstances. I'm reminded tonight of the four lepers. They addressed themselves. They said, if we stay here, we will die. If we go, we will die. We would better die in action than to die seated here. And they arose. I came tonight to tell you, my sister, arise. I came to tell a young man here, arise. I came to tell a pastor here, arise. Stop allowing discouragement and your circumstances to keep you down there. Lift up your right hand and say in the name of Jesus. I cannot hear your voice. I say lift up your right hand and say in the name of Jesus. I am rising. I am breaking forth. In the name of Jesus. Every power of darkness that wants to keep me down. Your time is over. Somebody say your time is over. I am breaking for hallelujah the four lepers they said if we stay here we will die if we go we will die we would rather die in action than to die seated here listen to me you have told people your story enough do something about it now You have cried to people enough. Now arise. Tell your neighbor. Push your neighbor on the left and on the right. Tell them enough of stories now. Enough of excuses. It is time to act. It is time to do something about your story. Listen. Listen. Many years ago. I, after my mother died, I found myself as a houseboy. And one day, I used to go to church. I didn't have money. A houseboy is where you work in someone's house. Sometimes you break a plate and you are not paid. You, you, you do something. You are, your salary is deducted from what you did. So at the end of the month, you have nothing. Tell your neighbor, you look, you are, tell your neighbor, you look like your story is better. But hear my story. Listen to my story. So there were all manner of circumstances that depicted at the end of the month there was no pay. So sometimes I would go to church and it is time to give and I had nothing to give. I had nothing to give. But I chose one day I must break forth. So one Sunday, one Saturday, I was tired of having the offering basket passing through me and I have nothing to give. So this particular Sunday, I took my best shirt. Saturday. I cleaned it on Saturday. I ironed it. I made it, folded it very well and I put it in a polythene and when it was time to give when it was time to give I went to the altar and I placed my best shirt inside the offertory basket but listen before you clap nothing happened you know sometimes listen sometimes we think we can manipulate God but God cannot be manipulated. God wants to see whether you can believe him. Even if he does not do nothing about you, what you have done. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse number 16, that Abraham, in hope against hope, he believed God. So I did that and nothing happened. That did not break me. I chose to still believe God. The next Sunday, the next Sunday, I said, 
God has not moved. I thought he would move. You know, there are these prayers we are praying these days where you want to tell God to come down quickly. God does not come down as you want him to come. He comes in his terms. That heavenly father, if you are doing nothing about this, I'm coming. You can still find yourself in heaven. You cannot manipulate him. So, the following Sunday, God had done nothing. The following Sunday, I had given that. So, the following Sunday, it was time to give. I had a small Alcatel phone. Those who remember those old Alcatels that used to charge while it's almost on standing. You used to put it in the charger like this iPad. You place it. That was the phone that I had. And it was time to give. When it was time to give, I did not switch off the phone. I dropped it while it is on. I said, God, if anybody calls, especially my boss, answer him. Tell your neighbor, you must be tired enough. If you will break forth, you must be tired. You must be stretched to the end. Listen. Listen. I dropped it inside the basket. Those that count offertory, those that go and do their accounts, one of them knew me. And he knew my phone. When they looked at it, he said, I think I know whose phone this is. It belongs to that brother who works in a certain house. And he comes for prayers. And they, they decided among themselves to raise the enough money equivalent to the phone. They give that money as an offering for me. And then they return the phone to me. That was the breaking point of poverty in my life. Listen to me. If you will break forth, you must do something about your status. Did you hear what I said? You must do what? Something about your limitation. About that thing that has kept you there. I gave it. They raised the sacrifice. They gave and they returned to the phone to me. That was the end of struggles and problems in my life. You cannot keep crying over your issues and you are not passionate enough to do something about it. Glory to God. I said glory to Jesus. Sing or you barren woman. You that has not labored with a child. Break forth. I'm just picturing. Listen. I'm picturing this woman. She has not. She has borne the reproach of being barren. Everybody knows she is barren. Everybody knows that she has not conceived. She has not had a child. And she's been challenged to sin. And I feel in this conference that God is challenging somebody that you need to stir up your passion. Arise. Stop complaining and murmuring and weeping and being discouraged. Arise. Stir your passion. Tell the Lord, I know that you called me and I am ready to serve you. I am ready to go beyond every challenge. Glory to God. I say glory to Jesus. Listen. Listen. Passion is what energizes life. When you see a happy couple, when you see a couple that is happy, can I use you, my brand friend? When you see a couple that is, behave like a couple there. Glory to Jesus. When you see a passionate couple walking together, enjoy yourself. Walking together, having fun, loving each other, talking nice things, talking to each other, walking into service together. It does not mean that challenges have not been there. But they have intentionally chosen that irrespective of their challenges, they must keep passion and love together. It does not mean that they have not fought battles. Are we together? Tell your neighbor, things don't just happen. They are caused to happen. When you see, listen, when you see a great family 
that is together, staying together. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by them looking like they are there together. Ask them the battles they have fought, but they have chosen to stay together. Passion, somebody say passion, is what energizes life. Listen, there are so many devils in this life that are out to discourage you. There are so many forces that are out to take out your joy. There are so many demonic, diabolic forces that are out to suppress you, especially as a young man. But you must choose that I will break forth. I will keep myself passionate. I will keep myself happy. I will keep my joy and my... Listen. Listen. I tell people in church, I don't believe the pastors who are here, whether there is any pastor who has ever gone to their church on a Sunday morning and they say it today, ladies and gentlemen, as you listen to me, I am not feeling well, but just listen to the word. No pastor does that. What is it that keeps them? There are days on Sunday morning, a pastor wakes up not feeling like waking up. But he chooses to stir himself up. Are we together? There are days, there are Sundays. We don't feel like that is another day you're going to stand on the altar and preach. But you choose to break forth. You choose to arise above the circumstance. You choose to tell the field. You tell your body, I'll take you there. You will be used of the Lord. Now, why are we passionate? What is this that keeps passion to us that serve the Lord? What is this that maintains us zealous in the house of God, in the things of God? I want to close. Number one, I want to close. I know we just celebrated Easter, but I want to remind you something. What keeps us passionate? What keeps us breaking forth? What men, men helps us to break forth? Number one, number one thing that helps us to break forth is to know that our sins have been forgiven. Listen. Listen. When you see us serving God with joy, when you see us zealous for God, it is the joy of knowing that our sins are forgiven. Greet your neighbor with a handshake. Tell them, I am forgiven. Look at that. Leave that neighbor. Look for somebody who looks like they know they were forgiven. Listen. Listen. Some of us, you see us in church. We were lost in the world. How many of you have a testimony of that? Some of us, we used to go for disco. Some of us, we used to go for, for all manner of things. There are people you see serving God today. They smoked weed. They smoked all the all hard stuff. But Jesus Christ forgave us, reconciled us with the Father. Nothing else could change a man. Listen, listen. As I've told you before, those of faith alive, I was born in an Islamic family. My great grandmother was a witch doctor. That's a combination to bring forth the brood of vipers. But look at what God has done. I cannot allow anything else to bring me down. I know that I am forgiven. I'm not in a mosque today. I'll be looking forward to next weekend to celebrate in refutory. But look at what Jesus has done. I have every reason. Listen. Listen. Do you know why some of you are not zealous? And you are not passionate? And you are not serving God? And you are not ready to give to God? You don't know the price it took for you to be in church. Listen. Listen. 
Some of us, when we were small babies, we were taken to witch doctors. When children were being taken to Sunday school, we were taken to clubs. But Jesus stretched forth his hand. I say Jesus stretched forth his hand. Some of you young ladies, today, it's Friday tonight. You would be in the disco tonight with old men. But you are in church here dancing for God. Look at what Jesus has done. Tell your neighbor, I leave me alone. I want to serve God. Leave me alone. I want to serve this God. Hello. I said hello. Let me ask you, listen. What is it? What is it that you have done to God? That is different from those young people who are tonight, who are tonight in the club, drinking and dancing and chewing all difficult things. There are young people who will wake up tomorrow in the police cells because they were collected in the street, drunk, wasted. Some young people tonight will get HIV AIDS in the clubs but look at what the mercy of God the Bible says for while we were still sinners Christ died for us God has reconciled us to himself we were celebrating Easter last weekend he gave his only son for me and you tell your neighbor allow me to dance for God Allow me to serve God. Allow me to give to the work of God. Allow me to sleep in the bush for God. Allow me to come here for God. I am going to pray for. I know what he has done for me. Can you look for three people who are away from you very far? Walk out of where you are. Look for three people. Tell them my sins are forgiven. You are not ready to, you, your neighbor is not cooperating. Look for three people away from where you are. Yes, yes, yes. Tell them I am I'm forgiven. Tell them I am forgiven. Listen, listen. 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 Listen to me. Thank you. Let me tell you something. Nothing. Listen. Nothing would cleanse the sins of men but the blood of Jesus. The depth some of us were, we were seated in darkness. The Bible says, for those that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Do you know why we are breaking forth? We have seen the light of Jesus. Do you know why we are breaking forth? We have seen the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I've seen Jesus. There are young people, listen. There are young people today. They are lost. They are serving the devil in Illuminati. Don't allow anybody to take you back there. Are we together? Don't be deceived with money. Money cannot pay the price of sin. Don't be deceived with a wedding. Somebody promising to marry you. No. I have been forgiven. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. For therefore there is no condemnation. To them that are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit. Has set us free from the law of sin. And death. Listen. Many people. Listen. I know you want to break forth. When you get married by a Chinese. It is not happening. If you are not celebrating what Jesus has done. Nothing greater can happen. Than what Christ has done.
listen. We are living in a materialistic age where people think God, they have seen God when you get a house. You think you have seen God when you get a car. You think you have seen God when you go to live in America. But that does not change you if you don't appreciate what Christ has done. And this is the problem, Papa. This is the problem, Papa. We are raising believers in church. And raise young people in church. Until they find themselves blessed with material things. And they drop Jesus. We, listen. We have young people in church who have not appreciated what Christ has done. You sing in the choir here. Until you get married, you begin to come to church at 11. Because you did not appreciate what Jesus had done. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added to you. Listen to me. If as a young person, you are in this camp, and when you get married, you disappear from church, you will never serve God, you will never be seen in church, then you need to get saved. If you came here to get a wife, you're in the wrong place. Lift up your hand and say, I'm here for Jesus. If you came here to look for a girlfriend, you're in the wrong place. If you came here to get a boyfriend, you're in the wrong place. We are here because of what Jesus has done. We are breaking forth because we know the price that he has paid for us. Are we together? I said are we together? I will be in church. When I have no money. When I get the money I will still be in church. I will be in church. When I am not married. When I get married I will be in church. I will come with my children to church. I will get old serving God in church. For what shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing, nothing. Lift up your hand and say nothing will separate. Is it money? Is it a title? Is it a, is it a, you know, nothing in this world. Listen. Listen. Don't wait to be passionate because you are in America. Be passionate even in Africa. Don't wait to be passionate. You know, there are people who say, I will serve God passionately when I get money. No. No. The woman is told, break forth into singing when she has no child. So that even when the child comes, even when the child comes, the child will not stop the singing. Did you hear what I say? Sing all you barren woman. You that has not labored with a child. Break into singing. Until you get the child. Break. When the child comes. I'll continue singing. Listen. This was the secret. Of Abraham. Let me close with this. This was the secret of Abraham. Sir. He sacrificed to God. Without a child. When the child came. God demanded the child. He was ready. He was ready. To give the child. Because before the child was. I was sacrificing. 
You asked of me when I didn't have him. Even when I get him, I will still give. I am in church when I'm not married. Even when I get married, I'll still be in church. Even when I get children, I'll still be in church. Even when I grow old, I'll still be in church. David would say, for one thing I've desired of the Lord, that I may dwell. Where? In the house of the Lord. All the days of my life, I pray for this generation tonight. May the Lord preserve you. I say may your passion remain. May your breaking forth touch generations. Appreciate the Lord. I'm so blessed tonight when I saw my brother testify here that before he was what he is he was singing Bishop encouraged him Bishop and mama would take his CDs abroad when he is blessed and he is a celebrity he is still in the altar that is the prayer that is what we want we have many today, we have many secular singers who started in the church. And I pray the church will not be a, a brooding ground for the world. We will sustain what we raise. We will preserve what we... We have many guitarists, many keyboardists, who are playing in the clubs they trained in the church lift up your hand and say we are not training for the devil anymore you are not going to sing in church and when you have become a celebrity you go to sing in the clubs no no lift up your hand and say we refuse we are not raising a generation for the devil We have many, many people, even preachers, who started in the church. And then they become politicians. And they leave the gospel. They leave the gospel. They start on the altar. And they finish in parliament. We are not brooding for the devil. Greet three people, tell them the devil is not taking from us again. Listen. Listen. Break forth. Listen. Break forth into sin. But I have a question. When you break forth, when you rise, will we still find you? Will you still serve God? Will you still be in church? Will you still be a nasha? Will you still be a protocol? When you rise and you are up there, We have many that are starting in the church and finishing in the world. It is not happening in this generation. And you know why? You know why they are starting in the church and finishing in the world? It's because they have forgotten this. That our sins We have forgotten the basic discipleship foundation. 
Are we together? I said, are we together? You are for, we are forgetting the basic foundation of the fear of God. We are forgetting why we are passionate in God is because our sins. Lift up your hand and tell him, thank you for forgiving my sins. Is that the way you tell him, tell him, lift your hands again and tell him, nothing would wash away my sins but your blood. Nothing would change my life but your sacrifice. Lord, help me not to forget that in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. We have been brought, we, the Bible says we were not a people. Now we are God's people. We that were not counted, now we are counted. We are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. His mercy and his love changed us. I cannot trade Jesus for fame. I cannot trade Jesus for money. Listen young people. Don't trade Jesus for marriage. If a man wants to marry you, let him marry you in the church. Are we together? I said, are we together? Ask your neighbor, do you know the price of your sins? Listen. The woman that was a prostitute, when her sins were forgiven, she went and took the alabaster box, the most expensive thing she had, and she broke it to the feet of the master. Why we have lost passion in church is that we have forgotten what Christ has done for us. And the Bible says, while she was ministering to Jesus with the alabaster box, Simon, the owner of the house, began to complain in his heart, saying, if all oh, this man was a prophet, he would have known what manner of woman this is. Jesus, the Bible says, perceiving the thoughts of Simon, he turned to him and he said, Simon, since I came to your house, you have not given me water for my feet. You have not ministered to me. But this woman, whose sins are many, she has been here ministering for me. And he said to her, woman, your sins are forgiven. Listen, we have many people today who are in church for the wrong reasons. That is why when you see some people zealously serving God, you begin to criticize them. We are not here for titles. We are here because we know what he has done for us. Are we together? We are not here for celebrity. We are here because we know. Tell your neighbor, I know what he has done for me. When you see. Somebody breaking forth. Don't criticize them. Don't analyze them. You don't know where they have come from. You don't know how far they have been brought by his mercy. 
Let them break forth and serve the Lord. Hello. I say it alone. Some of us, and I can tell because we are Africans here. Most of us here, I'm not sure whether we have a third generation believer here. Ask your neighbor, what generation of believer are you in your family? Some of you, your fathers were sorcerers and gomers, witch doctors, diviners. Ask your neighbor for me, what generation of a believer are you in your family? In my family, I am the second. It is my uncle who brought Christianity into our family. So when you see some of us crying before God and breaking forth and giving, I had people giving here. I saw people giving here. I saw people giving here. When you know what he has done for you, you will never struggle to give to him. This sound system, Papa, it is just one man's business and he behaves like nothing has happened. But it is because we, have, we are not remembering what he has done to us. That we struggle to give to him. I repeat. There isn't many amens. But let me repeat. I saw giving happening here. But I can tell you. If we get to know what he has done for us. This sound system. Papa is raising money here. Is one man's agenda. To go to China. Buy it. Bring it here. And say don't give a testimony. Why? Because. Is it because he is giving the sound because he wants to be known? No. When the woman knew the price of her sins, she was ready to break forth with everything that she had. Are we together? Number two, and then I close tonight. I close tonight. We are passionate and we are breaking forth to Jesus doing everything we are doing for him because we've had encounters with him. When you see, listen, listen, when you see a man that has had an encounter with Jesus, you don't force them to sing. You don't force them to lift their hands. You don't force them to pray. You don't force them to live a holy life. Why we are still preaching holiness in church is because many have not yet encountered Jesus. You have encountered church and religion, but not Jesus. Many young people have encountered the God of, they have encountered the salvation of their parents, but they have not encountered the Savior. That is why you can come to this summit to look for a wife. You're in the wrong place. It's because you lack an encounter. Ask your neighbor, have you encountered Jesus? Listen. When Jacob, as I close, when Jacob encountered the angel, anybody who met Jacob did not need to be told the man has encountered God. In the morning, Jacob was limping. Why? You cannot have an encounter with God and remain the same. You cannot have an encounter with God 
and struggle to serve God. Listen, when the woman of Samaria, the Samaritan woman, encountered Jesus, she ran to the city and she told the man, come and see a man, come. Why we are no longer telling people the sharing the love of Jesus is because we have not encountered God. And I pray, lift up your hand, I pray, may God give this generation an encounter. Not a story, but may God give you a personal encounter. Lift up your hand and tell him, Father, give me a personal encounter with you. Give me a personal Holy Spirit. Reveal the Father to me. Reveal the Father to me. Shall we all stand on our feet? Stand up on your feet wherever you are. Stand up on your feet and lift up your hands to Jesus. Lift up your hands to Jesus. I pray for this generation that if you're going to break forth, you'll need an encounter. Lift up your hands to him. Lift up your hands to him. Lift up your hands to him. Lift up your hands to him and open your mouth. And I want you to make your own personal prayer tonight. Tell him, God, I need an encounter with you. I need a personal encounter. I have heard about you. I've heard about you. But I want to tell my own personal encounter. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Lift up your hands. Open your mouth and tell him, God, I've heard about you. But I need my own personal encounter. I need my own personal experience. I need my own personal experience. I need my own personal experience. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Open your mouth. Talk to God. What is missing in your life is a personal encounter so that your life can be turned around. If you can get your own encounter with Jesus, you will never struggle with that thing again. That thing you are calling an habitual sin. If you can get your own encounter with Jesus. If you can get your own encounter with God. You will never struggle with that sin again. You will never struggle in that issue again. Lift up your voice and your hands to Jesus. You will never struggle with that addiction again. If God can reveal. I want to hear a hungry generation that is saying, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Reveal your son to me. Holy Spirit, that is what changed my life, young people. You can be in church and get lost in church, but if you get an encounter with this Jesus, you will never be pushed in the things of God again. Oh, Lift up your hands. Tell him I need an encounter. He said, Lift up your hands to Jesus. It is not enough to be in church. It is not enough to be in church. You need your. May God reveal His Son to you. May Jesus reveal Himself to you. Lift your hands to Him.
Somebody stretch your hands out the back. The power of God is here. Stretch your hands to me. your hands everybody there's deliverance happening here there's such a deliverance happening here lift up your hands the power of God is here to touch every one of us 
Makashatola Mazaya. We cannot lose a generation. We cannot lose a generation while in the house of God. And if you are here and you are not born again, you are here, you have never given your life to Jesus. Come and stand here. You want to get saved. Come and stand here. You want to get saved. You are not born again. Yes, you've been in church, but you are not born again. Come and join this man. Come and join this man. You want to give your life to Jesus. Come. You are not born again. Stand here. If you are not born again, come. Born again. You are not born again. You have never given your life to Jesus. You are living in sin. Make a straight line. You have never given your life to Jesus. Make a straight line. You are not born again. Yes, you are in church. Yes, you are raised in church. But you don't know God. You are not born again. Stand here. And everybody else, you should be praying for yourself. You are not born again. Come. You are in drugs. You are living a filthy life. Come to the altar. Make a straight line. You want to surrender to Jesus. You are tired of living a fake life. You are tired of living a fake life. Make a straight line. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus. Join them. Join them. Join them. You want to give your life to Jesus. Come, come, come. You want to give your life. You have never lived the holy life. You are not living a holy life. You are not living a pure life. Your life does not glorify God. You are in immorality. Come, come, come. You are living in sin. Your heart condemns you. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Yes. You are not born again. Join. Run, run, run. You are not born again. Come. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Come. You are not. You are living a life that does not glorify God. A secret sinful life. Ashes, ashes. I need your help. Ashes. We are, we are, we are, we you are saying I want Jesus if you are living a sexually active life and you are not married you are a youth you are living in sin run to the altar join these ones you need to repent and give your life to Jesus break forth and come Enough of hiding in church. Enough of hiding in church. Enough of hiding in church. Come and surrender. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and surrender. Yes. yes, I see young people coming. Come. Oh my God. Apo, Urain Zirap, Vanuva Zarap, Missa Infundisu. Come. 
You want to give your life to Jesus. Let them come, let them come, let them come. My God, my God, quickly my come, pastor, quickly come. Varikireva, we in Zira. My God. Listen, listen, the most dangerous mistake we can make is to assume that everybody that has come here is a believer. This is not a safari rally camping. This is a camp for Jesus. This is a camp of the chosen of God. You cannot come with the wrong reasons here. I feel, Papa, I feel very deeply there are young people here who are some of them are in drugs. Yes. They're in drugs. They are. You need to surrender those things. You need to give them over here. Come where are the ashes that are putting an age there? Can I see the ashes? Push them to the altar. Push them. I want to see a line, a clear line. Because we're going to pray for them to give their lives to Jesus. And after that, and after that we're going to pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. This is a harvest. Oh, yes. This is a harvest. Listen to me, young people. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me, every young person that has come to the front. Look at me. Look at me. Let me see your hands. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you are saying, I want to get born again. I want to mean business with God. Wave to me. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Listen, 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 listen. What you need is to give your life to Jesus. Number two, an encounter with God. The infilling of the Holy Spirit with the speaking of tongues. You tell God, touch my tongue, touch my lips, let your fire burn within me. Let the spirit of immorality leave my life. Listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. I want to say something. Demonic kingdom. They know we are here. And they would want to pervert the agenda of God. And give us the other wrong agenda. Marine spirits. Let me say something. And I have felt, I have fought with this thing overnight. The Spirit of God told me to say this here. Marine spirits find access in the gathering of saints mm. through the spirit of immorality. Yes. When you engage in sex outside marriage, you open a portal for demonic marine spirits to operate in that environment. Some of you, you need deliverance. You need to repent. If you are in pornography, you need to repent. If you are living in wickedness, homosexuality, you need to repent. If you are in drugs, you need to repent. Listen, you cannot open another portal here. We have one portal open here. The portal of heaven. For the flow of the spirit and angelic activi activities. Not demonic activities. Are we together? I said are we together? Lift your hands to heaven and close your eyes. 
pray. The rest of us, let's lift our hands towards them and let's pray with them. Say, Lord Jesus. Lift your voice and say, Lord Jesus. This evening, I repent my sins. I have heard your word. And I accept that I'm a sinner. I need your mercy and your forgiveness. I have sinned against you. And I've sinned against myself. Tonight I pray that you forgive me. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of my life. From tonight, I give my life to Jesus. I receive the life of God from today. I am born again. I am a child of God. My sins are forgiven. I am a new creation. I will live for Jesus. And I will serve Jesus. All the days of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Deliver me from every bondage. I surrender to you. Holy Spirit, lift your hands and tell him, Holy Spirit, fill me. Open your mouth, close your eyes. Tell him, Holy Spirit, fill me. Pastors, let's lay our hands on them right now for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth, talk, talk, talk. Tell him, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Touch.
Everybody lift up your hands. Those who can speak in tongues, pray in the spirit right now. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon you right now. Everybody lift up your hands. Let there be healing. Let there be miracles. Let doors open in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be employment over this generation. Holy Ghost, international doors, opportunities, scholarships. I open doors. My God, I pray. Lift up your hands, everybody. Look up to Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Answer questions. Answer questions that are in the hearts of your people. Lift up your hands, somebody. I this field touch let this young people raise prophets raise worshippers oh shata rabagata masoko lobos eh shata lift your hands God is touching you ashes be ready once God touches you, wherever you are, bring them here. Makatolo Bosia. Holy Spirit, I pray. Open their eyes. Open their eyes. Oh, Shatalama Zekereba. You cannot be limited here. You cannot continue to struggle. Let there be deliverance all over. Let bondages be broken. Let the river of God flow. Oh, Shakataya Mazanda, Makatalabosia, miracles all over. I release the supernatural power of God, the miracle working power of God. We break every stronghold, we break every demonic stronghold in the dreams. Oh, Shataya Madaya, Esopela Kata. My God, my God, I pray. Encounters all over. Encounters all over. Shatanobo Sire. Holy Spirit. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost. 
Let the fire, the consuming fire of God, all over this field. Come on, pastors, pray for them as they come. Lose, lose their destiny. Lose their heart. We are. 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 We break it in the name of Jesus. Tino i parazza maneruano. Tino i parazza maneruano. Sunungurwa nesita rajeso. Sunungurwa nesita rajeso. Oh, vanorwara vapore. Oh, seva kabatwa nemwe Baba Maneruano, Jehovah Murapi Wedo, Poresai Varikurwara Vose, Poresai Vakabatikana Vose, Dinoraira Mepotesirwere, Mepotokurwara, Gatsire Getetiene, Matimoni Osenga Paratwe, Vakasungwa Neme Matimon. Gava Sunungurwe Musita Rajais Wafundi Suya Katakurwoyu Bata in Namata in I 
Usamanyire kutende uchisia anointi ngiripo anointi Wakavinga bisa anointi Vose variku batu kwa nemwe ya kaipo kwa onze ikuno Vose ikuno we are here to pray for them Silapa huwa kulegeida Vose ikuno we are here to pray for them Ah, chimbo simu zama uko ako utaure nendimi Na mata nume ya mche no kamira ibabo Taura nendimi uri ibabo, come on Speak in tongues everybody Kuluma nendimi Speak in tongues everybody Kuluma nendimi Rende rebosa tayande le rebosa Yele rebekeri ala rabakaya te rebosa Mela raba kaya derebosha, yele rebekeri la raba kaya derebos. Mela raba kaya derebo. Taura 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 nendi mi wakamira ibabo. Speak in tongues wherever you are. Mela raba kaya derebosha ya nala. Lay hands on her. She goes. One person lay hands on her. Anuenda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 